Hi guys, today I'm joining you from Toronto, Ontario, and I'm at the Toronto Zoo. This is the largest zoo in Canada with over 5,000 animals and 500 different species. Let's go see what we can see. The Toronto Zoo welcomes over 1.3 million visitors each year and sits on 700 acres of land divided into seven sections, which each represent a geographic region. Starting the day off at Tundra Trek, this area features the zoo's arctic animals, including the polar bears, which can be viewed from several different levels. Polar bears are the largest land carnivores in the world, tied with the Kodiak brown bears. They can weigh 1,800 pounds and grow to over 11 feet long, but despite their large size, this guy looks relatively graceful when swimming underwater. The Australasian Pavilion features animals from the Australian mainland as well as the surrounding islands. Like the kookaburra who's known for its distinctive laughing sound. Or the green tree python which is found at the very north of Australia as well as New Guinea and the Solomon Islands and can grow to about 7 feet in length. Like the name implies, the adults are bright emerald green, but the juveniles can range in color from lemon yellow to red, gold, or orange. Similarly, the emerald tree boa averages about six feet in length, but are differentiated by the white blotches found along its midline. The emerald tree boa has heat sensing pits around its mouth that give it a precise thermal imaging of its surroundings. The Komodo dragon is a fascinating species, and it's only found on a few small islands in Indonesia. The Komodo dragon is one of the largest and heaviest lizards in the world, weighing up to 300 pounds, and averages about 11 feet in length. The red-clawed yabby is the largest freshwater crayfish, reaching about 10 inches long and weighing half a pound. The yabby are blue or blue-green in color, and you can tell the males from the females because the males have red patches on the outside of their claws, but the females have claws that are pure blue. The Fly River Turtle is named after the river where it was discovered, but it's also known as the pig nose Turtle. This creature can weigh up to 65 pounds, and unlike most turtles, their shell is covered in a leathery pitted skin. Next, let's head to the Great Barrier Reef exhibit, which features creatures from the waters surrounding Australia. Like moon jellyfish, which are found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Jellies don't have a backbone, a brain, or a heart, and mainly drift with the currents eating plankton. Moon jellies get their name from the four crescent moon shapes found on top, but they're actually mostly transparent to make them less visible to predators. The Great Barrier Reef is home to a variety of colorful fish like the pennant coral fish, lionfish, and long-nosed butterfly fish, and pot-bellied seahorse which can be found in the southwest Pacific Ocean around Australia and New Zealand. Seahorses are bony fishes with gills, fins, and a swim bladder, and they swim in an upright position. They use their tail as an anchor by wrapping it around seagrass or other objects. And interestingly, they don't have teeth or a stomach. Instead, they create a vacuum with their tube-like snout to capture their prey. Despite their tiny size, a seahorse can consume up to 3,000 brine shrimp each day. Next, let's take a peek at the Eurasia Wilds. Barbary sheep, known as mouflon, are a species of wild sheep and are thought to be one of the original ancestors of all modern-day sheep. Mouflon can grow three and a half feet tall and weigh up to about 110 pounds. The males have larger horns than the females and the horns themselves can be about 30 inches in length. Bactrian camel can be identified by their two humps. Camels that have only one hump are called dromedaries. Bactrian camels have two broad toes on each foot. They average about seven feet tall and weigh about 1,800 pounds. 
And these are West Caucasian Tur, which live in the Caucasus Mountains in Georgia and Russia. They like to live in rugged mountain terrain just below the snow line at about 8,000 to 4,000 meters above the sea level, and are herbivores feeding on grass and herbs in the summer and leaves in the winter. Heading over to the Americas, this area of the zoo houses animals from both North and South America. This is a spectacled owl. These large owls have dark heads and backs, lighter colored fronts, and an unmistakable facial pattern. The light circles around their eyes give them the appearance that they're wearing spectacles. The spectacle owl stands about 18 inches tall and weighs only 2 pounds, and as with most raptors, the females of the species are actually larger than the males. Boa constrictors live between northern Mexico down through Central and South America. The largest boa constrictor ever recorded was 18 feet long. These freshwater stingrays can be found in almost every major river in South America. They can usually be found on the river bottoms, hiding from potential predators and waiting to ambush their prey. The red-breasted piranha also live in the rivers of South America. They're usually about 10 inches long, but some have grown up to about a foot and a half. They're highly predaceous carnivores that feast on small animals, fish, frogs, or birds, and they also scavenge for food and consume insects, snails, worms, and plants. Heading to North America, let's stop to watch the playful river otter. These otter are found throughout North America and prefer to spend their time close to rivers, creeks, and lakes. Otters have webbed feet and a strong tail to push their streamlined body through the water, but they use their short, strong legs to navigate the land and can grasp prey with their sharp claws. Snapping turtle are about 16 inches long and can weigh up to about 35 pounds. They have a rough shell which is usually covered with algae and can easily be mistaken for a rock while underwater. They have large heads and a short snout which sits just above their powerful hook-shaped jaws. And these American eel are found mostly on the eastern coast of North America, living mostly in fresh water but they return to the ocean to spawn. American eels prey mostly on small fish and invertebrates and can grow 4 feet long and weigh up to about 17 pounds. Let's head over to explore Africa. All of baboons are found in Africa, close to the equator, living in northern Zaire, Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, and northern Tanzania. They have a large and heavy build with sturdy limbs and powerful jaws, and have long, pointed canine teeth. These baboons have cheek pouches where they're able to store food as they move about foraging. Olive baboons can grow as tall as 34 inches and weigh up to 80 pounds. Next up is the white rhino, who's the largest living land animal other than the elephant, and they weigh up to 8,000 pounds and stand 6 feet tall. They have massive bodies, short necks, and two horns on their snout. In the mid-20th century, white rhinos were almost extinct, but thankfully after years of protection they've made a substantial comeback. Today, sizable white rhino populations can be found in various national parks, state protected areas, and private reserves. The river hippo is the third heaviest land mammal, with a bulky barrel-shaped body, a massive head, a thick short neck, and heavy folds of skin. Their skin can be up to three inches thick, and they have an impressive set of lower canine teeth that can be two feet long. To use those teeth, the hippo's jaws can open up to 180 degrees wide. Hippos live south of the Sahara Desert to Nambia and in South Africa and spend most of their days in the water, but at night they emerge to feed on land, dining on mainly tough, short grasses. They usually feed within a mile of their watery home, but have been known to travel up to 20 miles to find food. Maasai giraffe are the tallest animals in the world, standing up to 18 feet tall and weighing 2,600 pounds. Their necks alone are 5 feet long and are supported by 7 vertebrae. That's the same number as humans, the giraffes are just a lot larger. Giraffes' hearts are also massive, weighing 25 pounds, which is needed to circulate the blood to its lofty extremities. 
These giraffes have an incredibly flexible blue-black tongue which measures 18 inches in length and they can use it to pry leaves and branches from the treetops for food. Heading inside to the African Rainforest Pavilion, the pygmy hippo may look like river hippo, but there are some differences other than size. Pygmy hippos have a rounder head than the river hippo, with large circular nostrils, and their eyes are set to the size of their heads and don't protrude as much. They proportionally have smaller heads than a river hippo and longer legs. Pygmy hippos can grow up to about 3 feet tall and weigh 600 pounds, and they live in fresh water and the tropical rainforests of Nigeria, the Ivory Coast, Liberia, and the Sierra Leone. They spend most of the day resting in pools, swamps, and rivers, and soaking in water to keep their skin healthy, but at night they emerge and wander through the forests, feeding on the lush waterside vegetation. Surprisingly, these slender-tailed meerkat are actually a type of mongoose. These cuddly looking creatures are about a foot tall and weigh up to two pounds, but they also have tails that can reach 10 inches in length. The rainforests are known to be filled with colorful creatures. Let's take a minute to admire the cyclids which live in Lake Malawi. And over here is a lungfish. These creatures are living fossils which have remained practically unchanged for nearly 400 million years. They have a body like an eel, but they can either swim through the water or crawl along the bottom using their pectoral and pelvic fins. They live in freshwater swamps in the backwaters and small rivers in West and South Africa and feed on crustaceans, aquatic insects, frogs, fish, mollusks, as well as tree roots and seeds. The Indo-Malaya Pavilion is home to the Sumatran orangutan, which is covered in a coarse reddish-brown shaggy hair, except for their face. There are six orangutans at the zoo, but you'll only see one or two of them at a time, since they are typically solitary creatures in the wild. They're managed separately in four groups and rotated twice a day between the public exhibit and their three-story playrooms which sit behind the scenes. They typically live about 30 to 45 years, but can survive up to 50 years in captivity. Another resident is this false gharial, which is the only one in Canada and one of only 23 in all of North America. Unfortunately, false gharials are endangered and are found in parts of Indonesia and Malaysia where they live in freshwater lakes, rivers and swamps. The Indo-Malaysia region also has its own collection of exotic fish, like the tinfoil barb, the gold tinfoil barb, the black carp, and the jumbo gourami. Finally, let's check out the Discovery Zone, which has exhibits aimed at younger children, including Goat World. And over here are the guinea pigs. These cute and cuddly rodents have big noses and can smell danger. They love to eat grass, pellets, greens, and even fruit. Guinea pigs aren't nocturnal, but they love to take naps throughout the night and day. We also found a striped skunk, which is found throughout Canada, the United States, and northern Mexico. Skunks are omnivores and eat rodents and other small animals, as well as insects, grasses, leaves, buds, grains, nuts, and mollusks. And we were also lucky enough to see feeding time for the Abyssian ground hornbill. These hornbills stand about three and a half feet tall, but they can have a wingspan which reaches seven feet wide. There's so much to do at the Toronto Zoo that you can easily spend the day there. As you can tell, we got to see an incredible range of animals, but we probably only got to experience about half of what the park has to offer. I think the cool thing about zoos is you never know what type of experience you're going to get. Depending on the time of day and the mood of the animals, you might see different things. Hope you enjoyed touring the zoo with me today. Remember to keep exploring, and until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop.